here, you're waiting for the right greeting. Praise the Lord, everybody. Has God been good to you? I said, has God been good to you? Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who has you alive right now? He's a risen Savior. I want to welcome everybody here to the highest praise of Apostolic Church. We believe that worship is our number one duty to God. Amen. More than anything else, I've taught this church. More than your profession. More than your job. More than your social status. You are a worshiper of God. Jesus told that woman at the well, the hour has come, and now is when the true worshipers. Did you get what I said? There are a lot of worshipers, but there's only true worshipers who know how to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I believe I'm among a lot of those true worshipers today. Amen. And if you're not one today, and you don't know why all this is necessary, I pray that God will allow you to see how good and how wonderful He is that you will become a true worshiper of God. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm having a wonderful time. And I realize I'm the only one between you and your Easter or resurrection or whatever kind of dinner you want to call it. Amen. And I know all this action up here worked up an appetite. But we still got to listen to what God's Word is. So I'm going to ask you to open up to the Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter. I greet all our visitors here today. Amen. We welcome you to this wonderful resurrection service we are having. We're delighted to have all of you. And if you don't have a home church, we hope that you will consider highest praise as a home church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 24, we'll be reading uh, from verses 1 through 7. And then we'll skip to the end of that chapter to verse 44 and on. But Luke 24, chapter uh, 24, verses 1 through 7. If you all have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. He is not here, hallelujah, but he is risen. Amen. I like that, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Go to verse 44 now. Verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he their understanding. I pray that God open somebody's understanding today. That they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And 
Everybody say am. Yeah. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father. Amen. Upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them as far as the as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Everybody have joy here this morning. And they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Let us pray that God will have his way in this service. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the wonderful feeling and presence of the Holy Spirit that is here. We can't do it without you, God. And we just pray, Lord, now that we have sung unto you and worship you, that you would honor today the message as it goes forth. Let me speak as an oracle of the Lord to your people and let the written word become the living word in every heart today. I pray this in in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Shake your brother's hand and amen. Smile at him or her before you're seated. Because that's the last time you're going to let them interrupt you or bother you until this is over with. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Risen and ascended on high. Hallelujah is what I have to entitle this message today. And I pray that it will reach somebody's heart. That you will just put away the things that you're meditating on or you might be thinking right now and just concentrate on what we are here for and what God wants to do in this place here today. I'm praying that there will be resurrection power that will go forth. I said resurrection power will go forth into this congregation. Amen. And you will realize what a great privilege it is to be among worshipers of God. Among those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a real story to Easter. And yes, Easter's in the Bible, by the way. Amen. There is a story that we have understood Amen. Since we've been saved, how important it is, the salvation that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ. But I want to just instill in your mind here today just how powerful our Savior really is. Amen. Close to 2,000 years ago, amen, uh, a man lived on this earth, a perfect life. Amen. He came into the world without a human father. He was born from the womb of a virgin who had never, never known a man. The seed had been planted in her by God himself. Amen. Not only did he plant that seed in her, but the seed was God. The child was born like no other child. Every thought he had was perfectly pure. Every word he said was true and holy. Every action he performed was utterly righteous and he was without sin. His life had absolutely no parallel. He loved all men perfectly. He understood all men perfectly. He spoke perfect wisdom. He was perfectly gracious. He was perfectly compassionate. And he was perfectly merciful. Anybody thank God for his mercy this morning? He healed the sick. He cast out demons. He opened blind eyes. And he even raised dead people to life. Somebody say amen. amen. He hated sin. And still does. He exposed false teachers. And unmasked hypocrites. He condemned sin. And promised judgment on sinners. Who refused to repent. And follow him. He illegally and with no just cause. 
He was executed by the Jews and the Romans, crucified on the cross as, as, as if he were a common criminal because he exposed the hypocrisy of the false religious leaders of Judaism and because the Romans thought him to be a threat to the political security. At his death, the sky went black. Hallelujah! The great curtain of the temple which separated God from man symbolically. The veil of the holiest of holies was ripped from top to bottom as God, hallelujah, signaled the end of separation and the end of the old covenant and access through the death of the Messiah. The earthquake Amen. So hard that rocks split. Tombs opened and dead people came back to life again. In his death, he bore the sins of the whole world and died, my friend, as a substitute, as a sacrifice for sin in a sinner's place the perfect Lamb of God to atone for the sins of all mankind. Amen. Three days later, hallelujah, he rose from the dead, physically, bodily, and literally, he was alive. Death couldn't keep him in that grave. How do I know? Because there's proof, 500 plus People saw him. Yes. Hallelujah. Many talked with him personally. Yes. Amen. Some talked with him on several occasions. Some even ate with him. Yes. And for 40 days, he remained on the earth. Right. Hallelujah. And during those 40 days, he was seen only by those that believe. Are you a believer, disciple? One day while he was on the hillside, on the east of the city of Jerusalem, he was talking with his disciples. And suddenly, he ascended into the sky, was caught up by some clouds, and taken back to heaven. And thus ended a brief 33 year stay on this earth. The name of this unparalleled person was Jesus Christ. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He was God manifested in the flesh who came to die for your sins and for my sins. Other than his followers, the last view the world had of Jesus was a bleeding, dying, crucified criminal covered with blood, spit, and flies hanging naked there on the cross while his enemies mocked him. That was not the ultimate plan, however, for why Jesus Christ came. I'm telling you, this world will see him again. I said this world will see him again. The Bible emphatically tells us that every eye shall see him yes. when he returns in the second coming. Yeah. The last view the world has had of Jesus was not a dying dead Jesus, but a risen Lord. Yeah. A risen Lord on high who has conquered death and hell, coming in the blazing triumphant glory. That's the promise of scripture. Yes, amen. That's the promise he gave us. And that's the view this world is going to see for the last time. The question is, my friend, will you be ready when he comes? Will you be ready to meet him? Hallelujah. Amen. This is the whole story of Easter. Hallelujah. It's about a resurrected Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Who left us a plan of salvation and is coming back to pick up all those who have obeyed that plan Amen. of salvation. Amen. Anybody believers here today? Aren't you glad you accepted the Lord? How many of you believe that Christ rose from 
the dead and that he's ascended on high and that he's coming back for you. He's coming back for you. I'm telling you all, hallelujah. Amen. In all of ancient, ancient history, there is not a shred of evidence of documentation that has ever surfaced to refute the empty tomb. No one from ancient times has ever denied that the tomb Jesus was buried in was empty after those three days. Only the Roman soldiers that were paid off to lie that they stole the body of Jesus. Hallelujah. But he is for sure, amen, a, 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 a true witness of one who was resurrected. Now, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. As the second Adam, Jesus reversed the curse of death that was begun by the first Adam. You know the whole story. The Garden of Eden. God told them not to touch of that tree. Don't touch of that fruit. Because the day you do, you're going to die. What happened? They took it. They ate what was not theirs to consume, and God had to judge them. But on that same day, he had to praise that judgment. He gave them a hope that out of the seed of a woman would come back somebody that will bruise the head of Satan. Hallelujah. And I believe today that's how merciful God is to us. That even then when the first Adam, amen, re refused to obey God himself came and formed himself in a body of man and became a second Adam. Can anybody say praise the Lord? As a result, Jesus made a way for to be restored back to him. First Corinthians 15, 22 and 23 says, as an Adam all died, so in Jesus Christ, all those who are in him shall live yes. Christ the first fruits afterwards they that are Christ and is coming listen brothers listen friends it says all those all those who are in him shall live Amen. what does it take to be alive in Christ what does it take to be in Christ to be part of this glorious kingdom do I just go to church and sign my name on the roll book? Do I just attend a certain amount of days, some fellowship, and say I'm a believer and happy clapping my way to heaven? What does it really take? I'll tell you what it takes, whether you want to hear it or not. Come on, come on, I'll amen. tell you what it takes. It takes for you to be spiritually resurrected. Amen. For you to be spiritually resurrected in Jesus Christ. And that can only be accomplished by being born again. Ask the person next to you, have you been born again? What do you mean born again? Amen. Jesus revealed to us in Acts 2.38. Hallelujah. How that is to take place. You've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you must receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's why we're rejoicing today. That's why we could proclaim that Christ is alive because we went down in a watery grave in the name of Jesus Christ and came up a new creature in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become brand new. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We are spiritually resurrected Amen. when we go down to that watery grave. Hallelujah. How do I know that? I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 and 5 tells us, Therefore, we are buried with him. Woo. By what? 
<laughs> By confessing, saying the sinner's prayer? No. Huh? That's the first part, but it doesn't stop right there. It says we're buried with him through by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, yes. even so we should also walk in newness of life. Yes. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death through that baptism, Amen, right. Amen. we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know what that means to you, but I'm excited. Aren't you glad that he made a way for you, my friend? Aren't you glad he made a way for you to be saved? Aren't you glad that he made a way for you to inherit eternal life through his death, his burial, and his resurrection? He's alive. I said, my God's alive. And he is ascended on high and coming back for his church. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In conclusion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to say everything we know about God. Everything about his word and his incarnation in the man Jesus would be pointless if there were no resurrection. Are you hearing me, friend? It would be pointless if there were no resurrection. Just like you and your service to God would be pointless. If all you did was come to church, say, I'm a believer, sing the songs of Zion, clap and praise and even run the aisles, if you weren't resurrection in the watery grave. Jesus said it himself. Amen. He that believeth in me and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. And he that believeth in me not shall be damned. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord, my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. How many of you want eternal life today? Amen. May God grant us the same desire that the Apostle Paul had. Amen. When he expressed in, in the word of God, when he said that I might know him. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. That I might know him. How did he want to know God? His Savior. In the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Be made conformable unto his death. Even by any means I have attained unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen. That's why every true believer in this place, amen, should be looking for the day when you will be miraculously transformed, my friend. Amen. And be caught up to reign with the Lord forever. This world isn't our home. Amen. We are foolish to think that everything we live for is found right here in this life. That's why Paul, amen, said if, if, if in this life only we have hope, we are of most men miserable. Hallelujah. What would it be do us any good if we could gain everything in this life? Jesus himself said, what would a man profit if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What could possibly, amen, what could you possibly have in this life, should I say, that is far greater than an eternal life with Jesus Christ? And that's what we're talking about. Yes, we're going to dismiss from here. Yes, hallelujah, we might have a good time. Yes, we might see our friends, our relatives we haven't seen in some time. But have we prepared ourselves? Can we leave here reassured that when God should call us or when he comes back for us, we would be ready to go with him. 
that's why Jesus came in the first place. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And who was lost, you might ask? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So it's up to you and I to find our way back to God. And I have preached to you the message of truth, of salvation, that will enable you to do just that, my friend. So if you will stand with me right now, before you leave here today, I want to just pray a prayer over you, with you today. Amen. We don't have anything that important that we can't come and talk to God about our present life and situation, especially if we are, amen, distant from God this morning. If we don't have that guarantee, hallelujah. I'm not judging, but the word of God is what we spoke today. And if that has touched your heart, and if it, if it has made you aware of the need to seek God today, give us an opportunity to pray for it with you as the praise team sings.